Oh, there it goes. Where are we at? Oh, we need to be down here. Oh, would you look at that? It's that same, same silly dresser she's been working on forever. Um, I'm thinking real quick, let people hop on. We're gonna do some stripey striper sins on that right there. We're gonna do some reverse ombre stripes. What's that you say? You're about to find out in two seconds. I got paint in my hair today, see? See that paint there? I got the green on the green. How lucky is that? Couldn't have done that if I tried. All right, so hmm, quick rundown on this piece because I only have a short period of time, but that's all it should take to show you how to do these straps, right? So yesterday, Wednesday, on the Paint Couture page on Facebook, we, um, oh, I'm missing an earring. That's why it feels weird. I'm missing an earring. Um, on the Paint Couture page, we painted, uh, let's see, what did we paint? We did this gray stenciling, and then we painted these metal drawers here, and those are painted in um, Paint Couture Paints um, uh, Abundance, the darker kind of Frenchy blue, and then Queen's Court, which is that lighter kind of grayish blue up top. So real quick, I'm gonna, um, I didn't realize how high this was. Oh, you know what? I can pull my drill out, pop it up top. Genius. I get my little lab sign on. Sign on. So today, I, I promised you yesterday that we would do some reverse ombre stripes, and that's what we are about to do here now. So I'm going to take this drawer because it's the middle and it's the longest. And if you know how to make stripes, then you have got the um, basic gist of this down, how to make stripes. But there's a difference. So. If you are um, familiar with how to blend an ombre blend, an ombre is just kind of like a fade or a gradient from one color to the next. Um, there's different types of gradients. There's radial gradients, which are rounded blends that kind of go out. There's um, like more free form blends that are just kind of like, mm, I like to call it the blendy blend. You just kind of put accent colors wherever you want. And then there's just the ombre fade. Just a gradient, one color to the next, or three colors, one to the one to the next, <laughs> something like that. Anyways, so I'm starting, anytime I'm gonna make stripes, making stripes, I like to start in the very center, if possible. And there's a few instances where it's not super possible, but for the most part, start in the middle, okay? That's the best place to start. Um, the reason is, if you are any sort of percentage of OCD like I am, you're gonna see that center, and then you're gonna see the left and the right of it. I'm not huge on asymmetry. I'm not always thinking things have to be um, perfectly symmetrical. I like asymmetry, but balanced. I like things that are not necessarily mirror images, unless it's stripes. When it comes to stripes, I like things to be <laughs> symmetrical as possible. Because we can tell when you ran out on one side. We can tell when you started from one end and worked your way to the next and you have this little tiny stripe on the end. Or you worked your way from the outsides in and then you have one stripe in the middle that's like not the same size as all the other stripes. If that's your intention, fine, that's cool. You do you. I just, it doesn't usually look like it's intentional, even if it is. So, you know, you don't have to do it that way. That's just my musings on stripes, okay? Like, symmetrical is generally generally pretty much looking better so if you're hopping on say hello i am hey i haven't seen you in a while erin where you been besides canada thought maybe you didn't like me no more tell juliet i said hello so um i'm just hopping on here Ooh, i talk too much so we're gonna do reverse ombre stripes so if you watched or did not watch or you want to watch the base coat here I did, like I said, Queen's Court in Abundance from um, Pink Couture Fade, the, the darker color on the bottom. So now I'm going to make my stripes. I'm going to tape them off just like I would regular stripes. Um, I use painter's tape, blue painter's tape. Some people like frog tape. I've never been able to get the hang of frog tape, but some people love it. I'm doing something wrong because I can't get it right. So I like to stick with my blue painter's tape. Um, if you prep well your surface before you paint it, your tape should not pull off paint. So if it's not dry yet, or it's too 
you know, hasn't had enough time to dry or you didn't sand or scuff sand or prime like you should have, it could very well take off paint. Um, but if you've scuff sanded, prepped, all that jazz painted, it should be pretty good. I, I've only had it one time pull up paint like bad. And, um, and by bad, I mean like not just a little dot that I could fix with my finger. And I, I, after looking at it a little closer, I'm pretty sure, almost positive, that uh, at one point it had had some pledge or furniture polish of some sort on it because the way it was kind of, something I sh should have probably accounted for earlier in the game and just sanded it more, but I didn't. Lesson learned. We all make mistakes. It's do you learn from those mistakes that matters. So I like to use one inch painter's tape for the most part. On my um, jewelry boxes, I use washi tape. Um, these drawers are kind of big. I'm feeling like one inch tape might just be a little small. This looks like one and a half inch painter's tape. Doesn't that look a little more proportionate to y'all? It does to me. It does to me. That's what matters, right? <laughs> We're gonna stick with the one and a half. So, um, generally when I am t striping or lining anything up, I kind of eyeball it, not gonna lie, I'm guilty, I eyeball it. Um, as long as it looks visually centered or balanced, I'm good. But uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and measure it center this time because um, sometimes when I'm yapping my trap, I tend to not do so perfectly with the centering of the things. So I'm just gonna find my center. You can either go off the very edge of the drawer or this inset area. I'm, I'm measuring out this inset area. It's just a little easier. I'm gonna find my center. Okay, so these are 28, 28 and 3 eighths. Wait, 28 and 3 eighths, what's half of 3 eighths? What's half of three eight? We're just gonna call it. <sighs> Let's measure from the outside of the drawer and see where we're at. Ah, that's a much better number. 30, 30 inch drawer. So 15 is half of 30. So we're gonna mark off our 30, or our 15, which is halfway through. Right there, okay? I used to have a cheat sheet oh, on my desk when I worked in the office. Yes, I had an eight to five office designing at the computer all day. I had a cheat sheet with all those measurements on it. Can't have no cheat sheet in the workshop. I mean, there's too many things to write down. Anyways, so if you have any questions or anything like that, drop them below. I'll try to get to them later. I'm in a little bit of a hurry, okay? Wait, are you talk what are you talking about? I see. I know, I eyeball it a lot, but when I'm talking at the same time, from the region, hello from the region. Um, okay, so I will read through these later and I'll holler or answer questions or whatever, but I think, I think my girl's got you with the answers and the questions. She's pretty good on that, very good on that. So whatever she doesn't catch or doesn't know, I'll try to later, but I gotta keep it moving, keep it moving. This is gonna be the fastest ever striping line we've ever done seen. That's what they all say, right? So now that we've got our 15 inch center marked off, I'm gonna take a little bit of tape. There's a couple ways I can do this, my, my stripes. And I think I know my answer, but I will walk you through it. So obviously I did this ombre blend, two coats, let it dry. Um, I'm gonna kind of de-tack, yes, I, I, I made that word up, my tape a little bit. I'm doing the old lint on the pants trick, you know. It doesn't need to be super duper sticky, you know, um, just enough to not, just enough to make a crisp, crispity, crunchity tape line. Okay, boom. So let's see, we're gonna go ahead and put that on the center. So let's see, let's see where center is. Now I'm eyeballing it. So you see on my piece of furniture here, my draw, that, You see this um, edge, this bevel kind of edge around here? So I can stripe the entire thing over and under, or I can just do my stripes on this front piece that's kind of beveled out. That's what I usually tend to do. So because of that, um, you know, you can be a little sloppy with the paint. 
So sometimes I like to go and I, I take my tape and I tape around that um, beveled edge or stair-stepped type edge, whatever you want to call it. I don't know that it's beveled, but you know what I'm saying. That little recessed area. And I do like that. I just do like that. That way I can just slap my stripes on and don't have to worry about getting it all sloppy. Okay, so I'll do that all the way around the edge if I have time. Um, but I'm gonna keep on striping. So you can tape off an inch and a half or an inch or whatever your tape size is. You could do that. But I don't like to do that. That's too many numbers. So I just take a little piece of tape like that. I use it as a spacer, okay? So there's my spacer right in between. And that's how I know how far apart to put my, my, my strap. See, boom. Then we're gonna get a little mo tape. Okay, and put it right there. See, perfectly spaced evenly same size stripes. I mean, boom, you cannot ask for more than that. Boom. I can even reuse the spacer if I want to. Check that out. I can reuse it. So now I'm going to go to the other side. When I'm doing my stripes, I like to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's just easier to maintain equal, you know, or maintain your mirror images so I don't get all the way to one end and realize I really messed up or all the way to this end and realize I really messed up. If I go back and forth, it just gives me a little more time to um, catch any boo-boos, you know what I'm saying? Oh. So the reverse ombre part of the stripe is exactly how you would sound or think if you, you know, if you know what reverse is, you know what ombre is, the, the fade. So reverse ombre would be the opposite of this ombre, right? So my stripes are going to be darker or abundant to um, Queen's Court or lighter. So darker to lighter for the stripes, lighter to darker for the in-betweens. Yeah, so it's kind of like a, oh, like a little bit of a illusion almost, a little bit of an optical illusion. Okay, so we're gonna jump back over here. Boom, just our spacers, so we just wanna plop it on there easily. Let's go ahead and do, ah. we're gonna go ahead and do our tape around this edge real quick. Go down here. And this, again, is, this is just a little extra. It just keeps me from being sloppy and having to make touch-ups when I'm working quickly. You know what I mean? But feel free. Don't do that, take your time, whatever you gotta do. So we're bouncing back over here. Easy peasy, right? I'm glad I chose this bigger tape. The one and a half inch. I wasn't gonna. I was gonna use the one inch up until basically I plopped down here in front of it and saw it on the camera. I'm like, that's little. But I usually use one and a half, or I'm sorry, one inch. But in this case, I think one and a half is the ticket. Is the ticket. Mm -hmm. um, yup. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep on moving. Bounce back over here. Do you kind of see why I'm going back and forth? Does that make sense to you? Like, you know. It's easier just to catch any in inconsistencies at the spacing and on each side, the mirroring and things like that. If you want, you can take like a little popsicle stick or a credit card or you know, a plastic spoon or something and you can burnish the edges of your tape. I don't do that unless they really look like they're not sticking, like if it's humid or something, I might do that. But generally, I just kind of take my fingers and I run them along the edge of the tape just to be sure, just to be on the safe side. So we're gonna bounce back over here. And boom, so we got our perfectly spaced stripe. Thank you to that spacer right there. Boom, boom. Bounce back over here, right? Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So, I'm thinking, let's see. Oh, only got a few minutes. I gotta hurry. I gotta go get my chill in from school, so that's why I'm trying to kind of be off of here by 5.15 ish at the latest. Even that's pushing it, but I'm one of those people that is always late. It doesn't matter if I try to leave early. If I left right now, I would still probably be late because something would happen. So 
I'm not making excuses. I promise you this. There are mornings I'll wake up an hour earlier than I need to just so I won't be late and I'm still late or later than normal. Some oh, of those things. All right. I think I'm going to go ahead and just maybe, I don't know, should we just call it a day and just do the middle part for now? I'm running out of time. It's a. I pulled up a little dot of paint right there, but I can see some gold. So on these drawers before, they had a little bit of a, they were brown and stained, but there was a little bit of a gold wash over it. It's very strange. Like it looks brown, like the dresser looked brown, but in some spots it was like a, a gold wash or glaze over the stain. It's pretty, but it's just kind of strange. It didn't sand off very easily, so. That's not a problem. All right, so some people, when they do their stripes, so say, say we get all our tape on, we got our stripes, looking all good. Um, some people will take either a top coat or clear coat or the base color, okay? And they will paint just like you see here, almost like a third base color, but of the stripes. So no, you wouldn't see it. But what that does is it kind of seals these edges. So when I paint over that, it seals these edges and that way you can paint your other color on top and you are not very likely to get bleed underneath. I've never actually done that because I don't really have much bad luck with stripes, so I've never really needed to or had the inclination to, but it is a good tip, I think, for people who are struggling with that or, or still trying to find the right kind of tape they like to use or whatever, but it's a great tip. Great tip. It's in my back pocket in case I ever need it along with the old putting the saran wrap over your jars of paint before you put the lid on. Great idea. Am I going to do it? Nah. No, you will learn. I don't like to work harder, just smarter. All right. So last spacer here. Boom. So what am I going to do in this instance? I'm either going to have one fat stripe or one small stripe. I'm just going to go ahead and tape it off because otherwise I was going to have to tape this anyways, you know, we should just have one more little piece left, paint our paint, go get children's from school, right? We're cutting it close, boys and girls, sweating it, sweating it, pushing it to the minute, right? To the last minute. All right. So, oh, you can't even see that. Boom. There's our last little guy. Get the old uh, D-tack it on my pants trick and put it on here. You don't have to do that, but I just like to, you know, even though I don't think it's going to generally pull up my paint. You never know. You never know. So just being safe still sticks really well. Peel that slowly and a boom. So I just got a couple little spots around the edge here to... Okay, so reverse ombre. Like I said, it's an ombre base. I'm going to flip that squid, flip that squid. And reverse it on the stripes so that's simple enough right in theory and you're like why why would you do that i don't get it why i'm pretty sure you can kind of envision it right it's like a mm, almost like a uh, what do you want to call it a optical illusion okay so i can if i want to just paint it all one color or the other so i can paint this all abundance which is a darker color and it will look as though the abundance is coming up and appearing out of nowhere. So those I call disappearing stripes because the lighter color tends to look like it is disappearing into the darker color, okay? So it's not exactly the same as a reversed ombre that we're about to do, but similar, very similar. Both start with an ombre background, okay? Ombre fade background, whatever color you want, honey. Whatever color you want, you pick your color. I pick Queen's Court and Abundance. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a couple brushes. I'm gonna use, I've got a couple of little brushes here. I've got a mini, or <laughs> a two inch short handle angle and a long handle angle, boom, from Pink Couture. Both two and a half, or two inches I believe. So I'm gonna get my 
Abundance in my Queen's Court out. Queen's Court, Abundance, lighter, darker, boom, boom. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with our Queen's Court, which is the lighter. We're going to have to work quick, yo. Quick, yo. We got about five minutes. We can do this in five minutes. Am I right? Heck yeah, we can. We got this. We got this. Okay. You might want to grab a shop towel or paper towel or... <coughs> Excuse me. Old t-shirt, something that you can wipe up paint or dry your brush off on. Because um, we will want to wipe our excess paint from our brush occasionally. Sorry, picking the thing that fell in my paint, out of the paint. Queen's Court, right? Cheers. Boom. Boom. Cheers to ya. Okay. Wipe the mess off. So now we're going to start here. Touch that little guy up right there. Boom. No problem. No problemo. So, since we're reverse ombre, I'm going to take Queen's Court, which is the lighter, righter, lighter. And I'm going to start at the bottom, just like that. Generally, I try to paint in the direction of the of the tape. Okay. By force of habit, I kind of go that way. Try not to do that. I mean, try. And this is why I put this tape down here. See why I put that tape down there? Just that way I don't have to go and touch that area up. I mean, I'm just trying to, oops, this way. I'm trying to save myself a little bit at work. A little bit of time. Okay, boom. Just at the bottom there, just a little bit. Okay, so once I got that bottom, oh, well, let's call it the bottom third, roughly with the Queen's Court. Now I'm gonna come in from the top with Abundance, which is that pretty little color. It's like a robin's egg almost, or duck egg type of blue, a French blue. So we're, we're working our way from the bottom up for the reverse, okay? So flip it, reverse it, and stripe it. So I'm gonna start, start from the top down with the darker now, okay? And you want to try to work in the direction of the stripe, okay? It's kind of hard for a creature of habit such as myself, so <laughs> kind of got to pay attention and not, you know, not going back and forth like that. It's, it's very difficult. It can be difficult if I do say so myself. Put that little guy in for a second. So I'm just bringing it down. See, I'm just kind of pouncing it, like, not really technically even like a normal blending technique. I'm just pouncing it. Just a pouncing it. And you don't want your, t your paint to dry up on you too much. So if you need some Floetrol or Extender or what have you to add to your paint, that's fine. No biggie. And keep it going. So I want to take up basically the top two thirds of my drawer face with um, one color and the bottom third roughly with the other color, okay? You, you don't need to like measure that exact, but roughly, okay? It's a very rule of thirds situation to create balance. Balance. Say it with me. Balance. Balance on your piece. Is my art school showing? My art school showing? Balance. So we're just kind of feathering that downwards. We can get crazy with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. But we do want to make sure we get it on there, so I'll see. Just kind of dabbing at it to blend it. I mean, I'm not even like blending it, because remember, I told you, you don't want to go against the paint. You don't go that way if you can help it. it. Does not help your cause of trying to get a crisp line, stripe, I mean. Okay, a couple more. Then the fun part, the peeling of the tape. Well, I mean, it's fun unless you uh, <laughs> pull up tape. I just sat there and told you if you prep well, you should not pull up your paint. But like I said, it's happened to me. Um, I ended up deciding I, I was sure that someone had used some pledge or oil or something on it based on what I could see. But you know, nobody's perfect, things happen. Sometimes you have to touch up stripes, big deal. Touch them up and move on with your life. Okay, so now that I've got that, 
I'm gonna go over one more real quick time. Just like that. Just in case, I wanna have a nice dark stripe up top, so make sure I get that coverage. Now I'm gonna grab my Queen's Court, which is the lighter color. Okay, Queen's Court. Boom. And I'm gonna go work my way up from here. Boom, boom, boom. Up, 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 up. I don't even know if I'm gonna do like full. I'm just gonna kind of pounce that color on a little bit. Just like that, just like that. <laughs> So now that I have um, kind of those colors laid down, semi blended, now that it is um, pretty good coverage, I'm gonna wipe this off, wipe this off. One of my brushes, it doesn't have to be this one, it could be the other one, whichever one. Wipe off all that excess paint, okay? You could get a new brush too if you'd prefer. Grab a new brush if you want. Clean brush, doesn't matter. This will work fine too. So now, that I've got that pretty much dried off. I'm just gonna go through and blend real quick with this, just kind of pouncing. And at this point, I can go back and forth because there's no excess of paint. It's not very likely to squish underneath my tape. So I'm just gonna kind of blend those little areas right on, fade them together, fade them right on into each other, and kind of go like this. Up and down, side to side. It's like being on the piano, you know, when they do this. This is why my life, too. Oh, I gotta go. So let's peel off this tape right quick. Peel it off. Peel off and go. Because this is the fun part, right? Oh, I gotta go. Why didn't you guys say something? All right, so we're just gonna peel off some of it. Okay, are you ready for these? Oh, there's a little piece of gold that came off right there. So. Let's see. Are you ready? Ooh. Boom. Mm. Boom. So now you can see, right? Reverse ombre, flip it, stripe it, fade it, brush it, finish it, seal it, peel it, and look at it. So you get the gist, right? Oh, sorry. You get the gist, right? Reverse the ombre. Reverse the ombre. That's it. What do you think? See how it gives you that kind of optical illusion? The illusion of, you know, the stripes kind of fading into one another. What do you think? Think that'll work? I'm gonna do that all the way across the center. Boom. Can you imagine that with some sheer bliss on top of it, folks? With sheer bliss on it, what? That would be freaking sweet. Okay, well, um, gosh, I'm going to be so late, but I think that everyone will cut now, so who's surprised? Am I right? So let me just mm, peel off a couple more, mostly for my own satisfaction, to be honest with you. Oh, boom. Oh, boom. Oh. Sorry. I should have just left it in the thing. What you think? That's sick, yo, right? You could do that with black and white. You could do that with gray and black. You could do that with gloss and matte. You could do that with light gray and dark gray. You could do that with dark purple and light purple. You could do it with white and ivory. I mean, I'm telling you, the possibilities are endless. You could do some cool stuff. Sparkle, not sparkle, you know? Tone on tone. All right, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be late picking up the kid from school, but it's what, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. So thanks for hanging out with me on my world's fastest live ever, basically. Um, I will catch you on the flip side, probably next Wednesday at 3 p.m. EST on the Paint Couture Paint page on Facebook. Have a great weekend. Bye.